Very excited to introduce the executive director of the OpenStack Foundation, Jonathan Bryce. Thank you, Mark. And uh, welcome to everyone. Welcome to Shanghai and uh, our first summit in mainland China. Um, I just wanted to ask a question first. How many of you are at your first OpenStack or Open Infrastructure Summit? Can you raise your hand? Great, that's awesome. Welcome to all of you. And uh, for those of you who have been to our summits before, please um, also reach out and include uh, these new attendees, these new members of our community. Um, I think from our, from our uh, stats that we saw in registration, about half of the attendees here are at their first um, OpenStack or Open Infrastructure Summit. And you know, for those of you who are new and who are unfamiliar with the summit, this is an event that we take around the world. And we bring together uh, all aspects of the community, users, developers, ecosystem companies, to work together and to advance uh, open source software that can be used to build infrastructure. This is actually our 20th summit which is um, kind of incredible to think about, too. We've been to eight different countries. And uh, it's been uh, um, you know, a, a very interesting journey all around the world. And part of why we do that is because we want to keep growing and expanding and including more and more of the community and bringing people together. Um, so this is the first time that we have been in mainland China. We went to Hong Kong in 2013. Now we're in Shanghai. Um, but one of the things that we always say is all of our events are actually international events. And that's true of this event, too. We have over 40 countries represented among our attendees here. And that is, to me, one of the things that's so important about our community. It's truly an international effort truly an international community, and, uh, and I love when we can bring people to, to new locations to meet new contributors, new collaborators, and, and work together. If we think about uh, Hong Kong, this was in 2013, and back then, OpenStack was uh, only three years old. It was really just getting started. Um, adoption was very, very early, and uh, we, uh, the, the community overall was just a fraction of the size that it is now. Today, OpenStack is the standard for open source cloud infrastructure. And there are more than 10 million compute cores that are running within OpenStack clouds now. And we've gone from a few early users, especially inside of technology companies, um, to users across almost every industry there is. It's so cool to me to see the different use cases that we see now in financial services and the telecom industry, like Mr. Xi talked about, uh, research, academic usage, retail, on and on and on, all of these different kinds of usage. And in this market specifically, in the Asia Pacific region, we're experiencing very, very rapid growth of adoption and usage. Uh, a 451 survey that, uh, that just came out, the 451 market monitor has tracked the, uh, the growth rate in APAC for OpenStack adoption at 36%, and it's going to continue growing. And so that is something that is, uh, I think, you know, a great sign for, for this region. It's a great time to have this summit here and bring together and strengthen the community to, to power that growth. And if we look at China specifically, so many critical infrastructure systems in China use OpenStack within their businesses. And that might be the railway, for instance, uh, it might be the state grid company, which is the power company. Um, it could be China Union Pay. We're going to hear about uh, some of their usage in a little bit. But over and over, we see companies who are taking the innovation from the open source community and implementing it at China scale, as they say here. And that is so, so great to see. Uh, but that 451 research, it didn't just cover APAC. It covered the entire worldwide commercial market. And over the next few years, that commercial market is going to grow to almost 8 billion US dollars. This is a massive, massive market, um, a massive opportunity for companies to be able to create value, to be able to build businesses, to be able to 
hire developers and help customers. And I think that is also really exciting. Um, they track this uh, for, for years now at 451. They do a lot of research around this. And you can see when you look at this graph that the growth is consistent and has been consistent and is predicted to continue for years to come. So you know, having a strong commercial ecosystem is really key for strong open source. And, uh, and again, I just think you know, if we look at uh, 2013 in Hong Kong, the size of the commercial ecosystem then was a few hundred million dollars. And now you know, we, we see billions of dollars of value being created. So I think that's, that's really cool to see. The other aspect that sometimes people uh, forget about with OpenStack is that it also powers dozens of public clouds all around the world. There are over 70 public cloud data centers that are built using OpenStack. And some of those are, are, uh, are, are smaller public clouds. Some of them are, are very large public clouds. Uh, but it's important for us to remember that, uh, that you know, the, the software that our community builds gets used in so many different ways. And, uh, and it's always incredible to me to see uh, the variety of use cases. And I don't want us to forget public cloud. Um, but you know, this isn't just an OpenStack event anymore. And uh, we talk about a lot of open source projects. We're going to be talking about a lot of use cases this week. We have, um, we have dozens of different open source projects that are represented here. And almost all of the users are making use of multiple open source projects. If you look at one of the most common combinations, that's OpenStack and Kubernetes together. 451 also tracks the, uh, the container commercial market. And if you add up the OpenStack market and the container market, that's a $12 billion market. So when you put this open source together, you see even more value, even more opportunity out there. And I think that that is, is incredible to think about. These are technologies that didn't exist just a few years ago. And they've come from nowhere to global communities with multi-billion dollar uh, commercial markets built around open source. And, uh, and I want to talk a little bit in, uh, in, in just a, a few quick points about why I think the open source component here is, is really key. You know, open source drives innovation. And Mr. Xi talked about how important it is for companies to, to engage in open source and to benefit from that innovation, but also, you know, to participate in that to get the full value. I had a meeting with uh, um, the, uh, some representatives from the Ministry of Trade of another country. And one of the things that they were talking to us about is they, they had a concern for their industry. And they uh, were, sh were afraid that their, that their companies were not taking advantage of digital transformation fast enough. Um, they had identified 2025 as a, a point that they called the precipice, where if their enterprises did not um, change rapidly enough, by 2025, there were going to be billions of US dollars that they were going to be missing out on by not taking advantage of cloud and AI and, and uh, you know, these different technologies that are emerging now. And they had identified a few um, challenges that, that their enterprises were facing. Uh, they were having to spend most of their budget just running the business, doing simple um, IT tasks rather than really innovating and, and moving the, the needle on what the, what the business was able to sell and where the value was. Um, they were having trouble finding skilled personnel. They were having uh, uh, long delays in bringing new services online. And when I talked to them, I said, you know, I think that open source is one of the features, um, one of the strategies that can help with many of these issues and can really help to accelerate that transformation for enterprises. And why is that? Well, first of all, one of the things that is so important to keep in mind about open source is that open source belongs to everyone. Open source is something that spreads the innovation to anyone that wants to participate. It doesn't keep it locked up inside of a proprietary company or available only to the people that can pay for it. You know, open source belongs to all of us. Uh, when you look at our most recent train release of the OpenStack software, the distribution of participation is very impressive. We had, uh, we had 165 different organizations from over 50 countries that participated. And you know, the US had the most developers. China had 
number two developers. But what's really interesting to me is if you get past that top 25, the rest of the world actually represents the most code contribution versus any country. There is no one country, there's no one company that owns and controls OpenStack or any well-run open source software. And I think that is really, really uh, a huge value of open source and one of the, the greatest things that, uh, that brings a benefit to people who participate and adopt in it. Um, within China, we're really excited to, uh, to be working with many companies here. We've talked about some of the gold and platinum members. Um, we also are working with different standards organizations to encourage the adoption of OpenStack and other open source technology. And we're announcing a new partnership today with CES, CESI. The second point that's really valuable about open source is that uh, open source accelerates access to technology. So, you know, that technology is available, but we also see that that technology develops faster than ever before in open source communities. At our last summit in Denver, Colorado, James Pennick from Verizon Media talked about this point quite a bit and how for him this was uh, a really important and key point of Verizon's strategy and how they engaged with communities. He said, you know, when he uh, wakes up in the morning, he goes to work, he works on OpenStack, his team works on OpenStack, but at the end of the day, when they are finishing their work, someone else around the world is waking up and working on OpenStack and making it better, you know, while they sleep, while they, uh, while they rest. And, and so, you know, his point is that by bringing together these broad bases of contributors, he only has to put in a small percentage of the, of the effort, but he gets 100% of the value back from that community. And so that means that, uh, that, that small teams can accelerate the development of really important technology like cloud computing, container orchestration, machine learning, um, uh, big access to, or big data access, and all of these kinds of things. And that to me is, is again, a very important point. You know, we, open source accelerates the access and the creation of technology. And the final point that I think is really important with open source is that open source builds in community. This is uh, one of the things about our community and about the open infrastructure landscape that, uh, that I enjoy the most is we really have an incredible community of people who not only contribute to the software, like the developers that, uh, that contributed to Train, but who also work together to build local communities, to build um, user groups, to help each other adopt the software, get engaged in, in committing upstream, and, uh, and that is, is one of the, the things that's, that's really fun. These are from some of the local events that, that we did this year um, in Korea, CERN, Poland. Uh, but we had about 20 of these that, uh, that happen all over the world. And there are meetups and user groups that are getting together all the time. So, you know, when you join an open source community, you are not just um, participating in kind of a one-to-one -one relationship with a company. You're really joining together with a community of people who all have the same goals and are moving in, in the same area. This summit that we do, uh, these are, are, are some of our big events. But if you want to find other ways to get involved, you can go to openstack.org slash events and see events that happen throughout the year. We also talked about the commercial side of the community. You know, having strong companies who invest in open source is really critical for the sustainability of projects like OpenStack and others. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have a, a great set of platinum members and gold members at the OpenStack Foundation. And yesterday, our, uh, our board of directors approved our newest gold member. And so I want to welcome Troila to, uh, to the OpenStack Foundation as a gold member. So as we think about you know, what we can get out of this week, to me, I think that this is a very important opportunity for our community, but also for uh, a lot of the, the Chinese open source contributors that are here participating for the first time in one of our events, I really want to make sure that this week we build bridges, we find new ways to collaborate, and we build relationships that will help us strengthen our open source community and really open source efforts all over the world. Um, because this to me is one of the most important technology efforts that's happening today. And if we all take advantage of this time, then I know that we can do great things within our community and great things within OpenStack and great things for open source. Thank you.